Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to be talking with Judy Garland from The Afterlife. Now, Judy Garland has a playlist here at Above Life Channel, so go ahead and check that out because we've channeled with her one time before. So the reason why I'm talking to Judy today is because she was on my mind when I woke up this morning. I actually could feel a conversation between her and Mickey Rooney, and I thought, what's that all about? I thought that was kind of weird, but in my psychic life, you know, weird is pretty much normal. So I thought, let's channel Judy Garland and find out what that conversation with Mickey Rooney is all about. Plus, there's some other questions that we have for her, don't we? Actually, you guys had some questions for her. Maybe I should ask her some of the questions you guys have. Okay, in order to do that, I have to actually look up that video. So I might need to do that in a separate video. We'll see. We'll see, you guys. Okay, we'll see how long this gets. Okay, I have to do number three, I guess. That would be fine for you Judy Garland fans. All right, so many of you know that I actually live in Minnesota and I have actually been way up north where the Judy Garland Museum is, where she was born and, and um, her family lived for some time. And I wanna say Grand Rapids, I think it's called Grand Rapids. And like, I'm already in an altered state. You guys, this is the thing, okay? So I know you guys are gonna be like, get on with the channel. So you're gonna have to skip ahead if you want the channeling, but I gotta tell you, so here's the deal. When I start to channel somebody, if I can already feel the spiritual energy, especially in this case when there's kind of two spirits that I can feel, I become kind of altered. That's what I'll, I'll call it. I'm, in, I'm altered, I'm feeling altered. And then it's hard to use my mind to recall things. So it might sound silly to you that I don't remember the name of a city that's famous for Judy Garland's birthplace in my own state, but it's hard to remember to, to connect the mind to what I'm, connecting to spirit because I'm connecting through a heart-based clairsentient channel and the channel of clairvoyance, which is visual imagery. I'm also using clairaudience, which is uh, the listening, the ability to listen to spirit. Okay, so I've been up there last summer Summer 2018, I went up there and I took a ton of video. So there is a video for the museum and the house of the birthplace of Judy Garland, you know, the gums was what their names were at that time. So check that out on the playlist. Okay, so let's get to this. Hello, Judy, it's nice to see you again. It was, it's been some time since we've talked, a good year, I would say. She says, yes. Yes, it has. She actually has shorter hair, her hair is short kind of like mine. Um, it's a little curly, um, it's beautiful brown, very youthful looking. She has beautiful skin. It, her skin is really beautiful. Like it's very like soft and it's just, it's very, she has very beautiful um, skin. She's telling me something about, um, it wasn't always that way. Like she's telling me that she struggled with some kind of skin thing and I don't know if it's acne, or if there's like some spots or bumps or something, dermatologist stuff, like bump, bumpy skin. Like she's making me feel like it's not perfect. My skin's not perfect. And it makes me feel like there's bump, bumps on her skin. I don't know if she was very sensitive or allergic to things, but she's mentioning that. So it's kind of like she's saying, uh, look deeper, look deeper. Things aren't always as they appear to be. Okay, so I, felt you and Mickey Rooney talking to each other. And I understand historically that you guys were friends and both child actors in Hollywood at the same time. Can you talk to me a little bit, give a little insight as to why that conversation was something that I would be able to tap into right at the beginning of a morning? Because usually you guys, at the beginning of a morning, you are right between the time when you're waking up from your sleep state into your state of current reality into the day, there's like this window of time. So sometimes you can actually intercept or receive information, even unintentionally at that point in time. So just so you're aware, that's why it's a really good time to meditate right away in the morning, even before you get out of bed or right after you're out of bed, you know, when you're still kind of sleepy. So why is it that I could hear that? What's up with that? 
she says, oh, we were just talking. We were, we were talking about how funny it is that things, things have changed so much. Now the, the whole scene of Hollywood and all of the reality t- television and even the movies are so different than they were in our time. It was considered, I know for many, the golden era of film or the golden age of film, and, yet, and it looks so um, spectacular and um, very much, you know, a time of musicals and, and extravagant productions. And now it's so, it's so different. It's not based on the art, artistry of the art, the artist, the art, art form of performance, it's much more of a, a artificially created experience. So the, um, the effects and the technologies have, have brought just a completely different, different experience. But I think it's generational, she says, but I, uh, but I, I think it's generational. We were contemplating what it would be like if we were in Hollywood today and how there is a, there's sort of a nostalgia about being in Hollywood and old and, and as you know, she's, so she's talking to me, you guys, that's what she, these are her, she's telling, sharing with me, having conversation with me and you guys just get to watch basically. She's saying that, um, She's showing me, so I watched this video of um, Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and I know this is gonna sound so silly to you maybe, maybe not because you like to watch things like channeling spirits, (laughs) but I, in order to get inspired for my work to communicate with the afterlife, I like to watch the YouTube videos of the celebrity graves just the ones that that show the the beautiful history of the cemetery and the gorgeous monuments and the honoring of the celebrities and i have to be careful though so that i don't watch things that give me too much information about the celebrity like just one celebrity but just kind of a general here's where this person is and here's where this person is and look at how beautiful this is that kind of a thing so that i can see it and then i just can feel it you guys i can like connect and even though, of course, of course, their spirit is not there, but it is a place where if you want to connect, it's like a phone booth. You could do that. That sounds so silly, but it's true. All right. It sounds very strange to say that I am inspired by watching Hollywood Graveyard videos on YouTube. Silly. Actually, it's not Hollywood Graveyard. The actual place that I, or the, the particular cemetery was the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And I understand that you, Judy Garland, were moved, that your, uh, your human remains were moved from New York to LA to Hollywood. So let's talk about that a bit. Um, I do want to get back to also coming back around and talking about why you and Mickey Rooney are together right now because there's something important to there, I feel, as though. And she says, Hollywood ain't all it cra- is not all it's cracked up to be. It's not as glamorous as you think. It's glamorous on the outside, but on the inside, it's extremely lonely and it's a cold, harsh place. And it's, a, it's like a cat fight and it's a struggle for survival. And she's like, we are lucky, her and Mickey Rooney, she's like, we are lucky that we survived. We are lucky that we lived as long as we lived. And I think that's known, Judy, because we know now about the history of child actors and how there wasn't protections for child actors and forced to work long t- long periods of time and medicines and um, pills and um, forced diets and things like that. Things that adult actors also did were also applied to children and children actors were treated like adults just expected to do all these things and from some of the horror stories that are out there about you and mickey rooney and you know being drugged up to to wake up and drugged up to go to sleep and you know uh, given cigarettes and caffeine and you know all these crazy crazy things now 
hearing about that really taints the image of the glamour of those times in Hollywood. I mean, it really gives, even movies like The Wizard of Oz, it gives it a really dark side. And I know that that was, you know, you were a star of that that movie and, and um, of that time, both of the two of you were. And is, so is that, is there something specific about, right now I'm filming this in November, you guys, is there something specific about the date? I feel like, so um, Mickey Rooney was married several times, I think eight times or something like that. And that when he died, he was really taken advantage of by his family. And <clears throat> it feels like, and he was like, um, an old man that was, ne you know, neglected and mistreated, abused, and and I remember that there was a. He testified before Congress, I think, about elder abuse or that kind of thing. I remember that, and because you know, the political stuff was interesting, and that he did that, and. I can't, I can't, to be honest, I can't believe he lived as long as he did. And Judy says, neither can I. He outlived me. How did he outlive me? Now, was there romantic interest between the two of you? She says, no, he wasn't really my type. She said, maybe for a while, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit, a little bit of banter and things. But he, she's making me feel like he was younger than her or there was an age difference there. And <clears throat> that when you suffer through something, when you experience the the horrors of Hollywood and you have someone else that really understands the experiences that you went through, that's something that bonds you. That suffering, it bonds you. And I don't like to, she says to me, so she knows, says, you know, I don't like to speak of this. And that's why in, originally in the first interview that I had with you, it was much more um, like she's making me feel like I like, so I feel colder. Like I literally feel cold all of a sudden my hands are cold. So if you watch the first video that I did with Judy Garland and channeling her, you'll see that it was really a kind of a weird thing. And I wasn't quite sure that I liked her. I, I mean, and she says, <clears throat> that's okay. She said, oh, that's all right. Many people feel that way. Even my friends, <laughs> even my closest friends. So did you have that kind of personality where you were kind of a jerk or what's the deal with that? She says, I wouldn't say that. She says, I wouldn't say that. And I would say that at times the, the pressure gets, gets to me or got to me, you know, she's explaining. It's weird because she's kind of speaking in present tense. Uh, maybe it's because I feel her and Mickey Rooney and they're having a conversation and it's almost like I'm listening in on them talking in the afterlife about their human experience. And if I can hear that, then I can get the lessons or the messages to pass along to you, which I have been doing in this first part of the channeling. If you haven't figured that out, I'm sure you have. You can feel that, right? Can you feel that? Because mm -hmm. I want to talk to her about things specifically, but she wants to bring in his part of his experience as well and the ability to overcome the obstacles that are placed before you and it's the the overarching theme in part is life is what you make it and that everyone has to deal with things that they don't talk about they don't speak of they don't bring public and it does affect them it does form them and that Hollywood and the image of Hollywood isn't all it's cracked up to be. It's not, there's so much more. And like she said, look deeper, look deeper. All right, well, we can tell that because in recent history, in the last few years, there's been a lot of, of scandals that are um, political and social and like social justice things and Me Too movement and lots of things where we've seen people in Hollywood taking a stand for, you know, 
things like poverty in the world or doing things for um, climate change and things like that and being really philanthropic, like stepping up and doing things, not just doing it for PR purposes, but doing it because that's what they believe and they know that they can make a difference. So we've been seeing things like that, but we've also been seeing things like exposure of, of actors and, and people in power like Harvey Weinstein, like Bill Cosby, who have abused people and others as well. There are others, numerous other people that have been, whether they've been racist or womanizers or rapists or whatever, it is really showing like that power, the, it's opened up the doors, like everybody can see behind the scenes now into this, um, even like in the news too, like news anchors, you know, being exposed and for their power position and the treatment because of like Hollywood status, that kind of thing, fame. And so it's really been a lot, there's been a lot going on. So in part, it feels like, it's almost like that is a part of a karma that's coming up for child actors early on and actors and actresses early on that had the pressure to have to fit a certain mold, particularly women it looks like from their conversation, women and children, young people. She says, oh yes, it's quite different now. It's quite different now. She says, it's quite different. It's not safe. It's not, it's far from idyllic, but it, things have come a long way, I come a long way. All right, so can we talk about, um, like I said, I watched the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. For some reason, that particular cemetery, I'm like, right now I'm like so like feeling it. So I don't know, it's November, 2019. I don't know you guys, if somebody else, Famous is planning to make their exit soon. And again, it's November 19th, uh, November 2019 when I'm recording this because I'm drawn to that particular cemetery, Hollywood Forever. So interesting. All right. So you moved, like your family moved your, your memorial. So what's about, what's that all about? from New York to Hollywood. What's that all about? Did the rent go up? <laughs> That's kind of how it feels. Did the rents go up? <laughs> she says, well, you know, the weather is so much better in, in LA. She says, the weather is so much better in LA. And she says, I think it's, it's a matter of convenience and the opportunity to allow others to connect with my legacy is what kind of what it feels like, but I'm not sure. But to visit my grave, she says, I get far more visitors in LA than I would in New York. But maybe it's just because it's new. You guys get the feeling it's been like in the last year that she was, that it was moved, the grave and the memorial and all that was moved. Um, so, your daughter, and then I see Liza, Liza Minnelli. So are you okay, Judy, talking about that a little bit? She says, well, you're going to ask me, ask me what you want to ask me, and then if I don't want to answer, I won't answer. She's very brazen too, like, she's like, hey, just ask me what you want to ask me, and if I don't want to answer, I'm not going to answer. And she says, um, she's very talented. She's very talented, but she makes horrible choice in men. I'm like, okay, she's very talented, but she makes horrible choice in men, horrible choices with men. Okay. I'm feeling like she has a daughter too. Does Liza have a daughter, you guys? I feel like there's somebody else, like a grandchild. And I feel like, so was there competition between you and Liza? Like I know that you perform together and things like that, but was there competition? She says, there's a, she says, there's always competition. There's always competition. And Hollywood is cruel. And there's always competition. You have to stay relevant. And as you age, at least during my time, as you age, lucky for me, luckily, lucky for me, I have my voice. I have other talent besides beauty. 
And so I had much more opportunity to continue my career and be successful long after many other actresses had to hang up their stars. So that's what she's making me feel like. And she's like hanging on to your youth for as long as you possibly can, as long as you possibly can. And then she's making me see like I'm seeing snapshots of other I'm seeing snapshots of other actresses like um, Garbo. I see her, and she lived to be an older age. And then I see um, you showed me somebody else, and now I can't remember because I saw Garbo, and then I saw somebody else. Who else did? Oh, Marilyn. I saw Marilyn. She did not. Um, It feels like she alienated her family, you guys. Like she's kind of admitting that she wasn't the best person. Was that because of the, the addiction or the pills, the, the drugs? Well, yes, yes, of course. But you can't blame your choices on, on pills. You can't, at some point you have to take that accountability for yourself and realize that you can't numb the past. So, all right, Judy, so I see a lot, I do see abuse in your past, a lot of like abuse, like not just mistreatment physically, um, but like I see sexual abuse, I see um, just a lot of mistreatment. And I feel like did it did that affect your mental state or did you have some mental health issues do you think before that because right nowadays in our society we talk about mental health a lot and so and mental health and addiction seem pretty closely connected we also have prescription addiction because we treat the mental illnesses with medications which thank god for many it saves their lives but like we go do we go too far is the question you know so what do you think that the that life creates the mental illness and that needs the addiction to soothe that pain or dull that pain to allow you to function, you know, in the present because it's from the past? Or do you think that you already had something that maybe an anxiety or depression tendency that just this situations and experience just got made the depression worse and so then it showed up and then then there's more of a mental health crisis how does that make sense i think it i can't speak for everyone i can only speak for myself and it was natural it was you have to understand bridget it was normal it was completely part of the landscape for adults and children and doctors to prescribe medications to wake you up to help you to sleep it was normal it was completely considered normal even ivs or shots it was considered normal when you're under the care of a doctor it was just as expected and everyone everyone everywhere did it and they shared, you know, medications and sleeping pills. If you didn't have a pill, you just borrow one from your girlfriend. And it was so, it was a normal part of life. It didn't seem that different. It created a need for a, a dependency, yes, on substance of some sort, to go up and to go down and to to fulfill a need, it was like a quick. <coughs> oh, excuse me, you guys. Oh, sorry about that. It was like a quick fix, and after a while, it didn't it doesn't work very well. So then you have to find something else and other things and combinations of things. And um, She's making me feel like pills and like vodka or pills and a clear alcohol. I don't know what the clear alcohol is. It looks like vodka to me, but it has a smell to it. I don't think it's not champagne. It's not like bubbly like that. It might be white wine. I don't like white wine. Not a fan. Not a fan. Too dry for me. Too dry. But she's making it feel like it's just like a normal part of life and you just get into this routine and that's what happens. You just get 
it's just it just become it consumes you and it seems normal to you until you have these crises like she's making me feel like she has these mental breakdowns where she doesn't know if she's going to be alive or dead and then she comes back and she works her way back up and everything's okay for a while and then it goes back down but it's not like in and out of addiction it's like in and out of she says in and out of craziness in and out of craziness like she says, you have nightmares. She said, I had, I had nightmares from my experiences and you just don't want to think about anything. So you just, and she says, I wasn't a good person because of my demons. And those monsters were not made by me. I did not create those and I did not ask for that. So to answer your question, mental health was not a concern until after Hollywood until after my experience in the movies. Now, some might speculate that my mother had influence on that. And while she pushed me and, pressure, and did apply pressure to me, she wanted the best for me. She knew that I could be successful and I had a responsibility to take care of my family. And I just accepted that. I don't blame her for that. I just accepted that. Could she be mean or cruel? Yes. But that's all I knew. I didn't, I, I don't blame her. I don't even blame her now. So what about your relationship with Liza then? I mean, I know you have another daughter as well and a son, but do you, it seems like with her, because she's so public and, you know, a well-known actress and performer and do you, you know, and then it seems like there is competition between you, but it also seems like there is love there. How how could you be a, like a mother? Do you think you were influenced by your mother? In like, cause it seems like, I don't know. I don't know. It almost seems like a love hate relationship with you and Liza. She says, that's a good way to describe it. And that's a good way to describe it. But now there's only love. You know that there's only love in the afterlife. When you connect with your heart, there's only love. I didn't, I, I'm not going to blame my, my craziness or my, my competent, my incompetence at times, or my episodes, she's kind of making me feel like she had these episodes of not being able to, nah, 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 like just really crabby, almost like bipolar, you guys, like, nah, 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 like really mean and crabby, and then fine, and then mean and crabby, like, or passive aggressive, maybe is a better way to say it. And she says, I'm not going to blame that on my mother. I'm not gonna blame that on my mother. There's a lot of things I could blame on other people, but why Why do that? Why do that? Too many people do that. Was I jealous of, of Liza? Yeah, her youth, her youth. She's so young and vibrant and beautiful. And she had these beautiful eyes and it was a pleasure to perform with her. It was a pleasure perform with her it was like when we were together and actually performing not the practicing not the planning none of that but the performing it just felt it felt like we were as one like we were really like she's making me feel like that was when they were really harmonizing they were really connected that was like that was a, a great part of their relationship is what it feels like I think that Liza would probably say that too I think she probably would, yeah. All right, okay, so let's see what I'm doing for time. Ooh, gotta wrap this one up, you guys. I think we should do a number three in the future. So I, it would be great to ask her questions that you wanna know about her life or Mickey Rooney because he came in a little bit or she was speaking for him or talking to him. So we were able to hear a little bit of that conversation. So if you have questions about Judy Garland that I should ask her in an upcoming channel, go ahead and put it in the comments below. So then when I do another video, I will read your comments and use those to ask the questions. All right, this is Bridget. Thank you so much for watching this afterlife conversation with Judy Garland in the, in the afterlife. Remember the purpose here is always to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope because this this is your life, so live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.